welcome back to this year's Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. I'm travelling the length and breadth of Ireland to meet this year's nominees. And this week, I'm meeting those in the emerging category. My next port of call is Inniscorty, County Wexford, to meet a man who is already a sporting legend in his native county. Liam Griffin's Monarch Spa has been voted the world's second best and probably the only place in Ireland where you'll find a Shaolin monk practicing Tai Chi in the afternoon. So he can get us, you yeah, and I, to look a little bit like him. Yeah, right, yeah. you will, can, but yeah. we need operations for it. <laughs> <laughs> and come to see, can you help out with Wexford hurling? <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Of course, we all know Liam from his days managing the Wexford hurlers to their last All-Ireland title in 1996. Wexford are the All-Ireland hurling champions. People in Wexford didn't hear of Liam Griffin, but I'll tell you one thing, the whole world knows Liam Griffin now. His experience in sport inspired him to develop Monarch. Well, the one thing that you learn about training after a while is that freshness matters in sport, and rest and relaxation and recovery are actually, probably, more important than actually training, which seems a little bit daft, but it's not. It's actually true. And simply, people don't do enough of that in business or in life in general. Liam, you've been in the hospitality business for a good few years. Yep. Where did it all start? My first job in a hotel was a kitchen porter in the Ashton Hotel in Parkgate Street for a pound a week. And that's where I started. And, you know, my kids will start saying, no, you're barefoot as well, Dad. No, I wasn't, but I, that was my first job. I wanted to do something in my own area. I come from here. I'm born and bred in this area. And I wanted it to be special. And I wanted it to be something that, you know, we'd all be proud of. And I am, and we are. The great thing about Monart is we try to do everything that everybody else wasn't doing. We don't want to be seen as some kind of a an upmarket place that's only for the elite. It certainly is not. We've got everybody coming to this place. Condon Astor, probably the Bible of travel. We got runner-up in the world uh, in spa retreats worldwide. Now for us, that was a major achievement. There was places that are iconic buildings around the world. But we're from Ireland, we're from Wexford, and we got second in the world. And that is some achievement for our team and for what we try to put here and for the concept we put together. A lot of people think hotels are very kind of sexy places, nice tone hotel and all that. It's no different than selling muck you know, or shovel and dung. It's just, it's just a business, like. And people get carried away with the hyper statue to it. I'm in the business to serve people, and that's what all of us are in, and that's what we do. It's not about personalities. It's about what we do as collectively as a team. I think it's just like sport. You have to have a passion for it. And if you don't have the passion, I don't think you can get there. It's the same with an under-10 hurler. If you walk into him and you, you give him a bit of enthusiasm and you give him a bit of praise, and he'll bang balls over the bar from all angles. If you put him down, he won't get up. And if the leadership is not there to make you want to get up and do it, why would you bother? Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm, and I'm not going to lose mine. And that's what keeps people like people like me in business. It's a short drive down the road to Wexford Town to meet the next nominee, a man who has swapped the Swedish countryside for life in Ireland's sunny southeast. Fred Carlson moved from Sweden with his Irish wife, Geraldine, a number of years back and realised that there was a gap in the market for a business model they already used in Sweden. When we moved from Sweden, we, we used a similar website in Sweden to sell all our furniture from the apartment. And when we came back to Ireland, then we were on the other side of the fence and we wanted to actually buy furniture secondhand. But we realised there wasn't really a great, great website at all around. So we said, that, all right, maybe, maybe there's a chance here for us to to do something. The first year was you could advertise for free, put up your ad and you know people bought and sold stuff. And then we said that no, okay, now, now is the time for us to introduce payments. Despite the introduction of a three euro charge per ad, the numbers using donedeal.ie continued to grow. Can you give me a sense of scale and size of your website? We have over 1.3 million Irish people visiting the website every month. We measured the value there in, in May, over 50 million euros worth of goods were sold through the website and that's 50 millions that are sold by you know mainly normal people living anywhere around the country you know some of them might have a bit of hard times and uh, they're selling stuff they don't use anymore and it's fantastic that we you know we get an opportunity to help bring that money back into the economy it's, i mean it's fantastic we have six staff now the website is still growing you know it's, it grows at an amazing speed i, I can't really understand it myself we're growing by about between 400 and 500 percent every year when we set up Done deal. Our first vision was always, we had it written on the wall at home, on the, on the whiteboard. 
to be Ireland's biggest classified website. About a year ago, we actually achieved that. We, we became Ireland's biggest classified website. So then we had to change the vision, and the vision then became to be Ireland's biggest classified website by far, just to you know raise the bar a bit. And now, a, a year later, we're, we're kind of twice the size of our biggest competitor. So we're starting to say, well, we're actually starting to, we've achieved that vision. So we're now looking at, you know, the next vision. And I always seen Ireland as much more entrepreneurial uh, than Sweden. Irish people have a much broader focus. They, they're looking at the States, they're looking at Australia, they're looking worldwide. They have a whole different um, attitude to things, I think. And, and you know, that's, that's fantastic. And I've learned a lot from that. From a Swedish man who found success in Ireland, I'm heading back to Dublin again to meet an Irish man who found success in Spain and across Europe. Quintus Energy managed solar energy sites throughout Europe, providing electricity to the national grids of a number of European countries. So Declan O'Halloran's keen ear for languages has come in handy along the way. Buena sera. ¿Le importa que le hable en español? Bueno, vamos a probar el chorizo al vino y las albóndigas de carne. Uh, just bien con agua con gas. Thank you. Thank you. Declan, Quintus Energy, who are you and what do you do? We turn sunlight into money and we use what we call solar farms to receive sunlight, turn it into electricity and put it into the grid. With the buzz around solar power at the moment, the only way is up for Quintus Energy. There is no product in the European Union that's more widely consumed than energy. Not everybody consumes certain products. Ireland is maybe a huge consumer of olive oil, uh, but everybody is a huge consumer of energy. Changing the way we all consume, live, produce, uh, operate in, 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 with energy, that's, that's the most exciting place for to be in, and that's where we can create value for people and create a business model for us to grow and succeed. Instead of spending money on, on Saudi Arabian oil, we're spending it on Irish companies, European companies, that are into producing more efficient machinery, they're into producing new ways of recycling energy through combined heat and power, or through wind energy, producing it cleanly. Everything we can do to move in that direction means we're going to rely on our own resources to create energy and our own resources to make it more efficient. The first moment that an, an entrepreneur catches on to in his, in his guts, in his mind, in his, in, within his instinct, is when he sees change happening. Because change gives rise to opportunity. Ten years from now, I'm not going to regret getting into the energy space. I got in when it changed and changed for good. And being in it at that point, that was the opportunity for me. Declan, are you optimistic or pessimistic about Ireland as a nation and the future of our country? What I know from history is countries don't disappear. They don't collapse, they don't go away. Whatever's going to happen, we're going to get through it. Just because somebody else says Ireland's on the verge of ruin or Spain's going to go bankrupt or Greece has to be bailed out, forget that nonsense. Ireland is bigger than the financial circumstances it's in. For a tiny country to have so much identity in the world, do you know how many people in Spain don't know what the population of Ireland is? And when I ask them what they think the population of Ireland is, they think, well, could it be 15 million? Could it be 20 million? They think we're bigger than we are. And the thing is, we are bigger than we are. And we're bigger than the financial circumstances we're in, and we're going to get through it. And some people are going to get hurt along the way, but financially. But as a country, we're going to get through it. There is a real international flavor to this year's emerging entrepreneurs. And I'm heading a long way to meet our final nominee. Conrad Burke's company, Innovalite, are also in the solar energy business. The Silicon Valley-based company have developed a unique process that has revolutionized the manufacture of solar cells. I caught up with Conrad in Shanghai, the latest business outpost for the company. Shanghai is a pretty sophisticated area now. You're seeing a lot of really rich technology here coming out of this area too. For us to ignore this market would be suicidal. They tell me there are over 20 million people living in this city. Most of, it, of the city has been built in the past 10 years. That's right. Particularly now with Expo going on, who knows how much the population has swelled even in these last coming weeks. And they're going to tear it down in a couple of months after having done all that too. Conrad, actually a question. You don't know who I could talk to because there's a few of those buildings I could bring back to Ireland and, and <laughs> <laughs> create a concert hall or you something. You never know. We should, that's a great entrepreneur. Yeah. There's a, maybe we should both quit our jobs Give right now. Give me five. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So, Pork, I wanted to take you down here. This is right. actually it's a national holiday today, so there's a lot more people out than would normally be out here today. This is the Shanghai Tower. Oh, the famous Shanghai Tower. Yeah, isn't that pretty amazing? Tell me a bit about your background. Well, and your my family parents. And... Well, let me go to my parents. My parents, uh, my father is from Cross Malina in County Mayo. Great uh, footballing uh, town. That's right. That's and right. My, my mother is from Kalala, a small uh, seaside village off the Mayo coast. When they got married, they moved to Dublin. I was born in Dublin, and then they moved to, to Bray, County Wicklow, later. And uh, the rest is history. I went to school, actually, out in St. David's and Greystones. Well, that can't be too bad in St. David's, because Conrad's company developed a way of getting more power from solar cells at a lower cost. In a rapidly expanding market, the potential is huge. Today, actually this year, about 4 billion solar cells will be made worldwide and if we can capture a portion of that, we'll be pretty happy and wow. we're on track to be a major provider in that, mar in that market. So that's, that's the next big dot in Conrad's work life and Absolutely. I wish you well. Thank you so Go much, Bart. All right, thank Spread you so the much. Irish people doing so well. Cheers, thank you so much. I've now met all eight nominees in this year's emerging category and my trip took me from Cavan to Shanghai. Now, it's back to the judges in Dublin, where no doubt everyone will have their own favourite. The standard here appears to be really, really high in emerging, Michael. I'm sure you've made up your mind, but will the judges agree? And I think this category is better than the emerging category has been for years. They're starting on the local market, supplying or servicing a, a, a domestic market, but they have the ambition. Is ambition enough? I think we should be rewarding execution here. So those companies that are operating only in Ireland uh, I don't think deserve the same recognition that those that are succeeding on the international stage. I don't agree with that at all. I think it's about the skills and ability of the entrepreneur and the type of organisation they can build. It's also great to see some industries that are just emerging. We're in the depths of recession and there's some Irish people that are developing new businesses that weren't in the world space two or three years ago. It's going to be a real, real challenge to narrow this down because every single one of the, the eight finalists are, are real entrepreneurs in their own right. Right now next door, the judges are deliberating over the, who's going to win the emerging category. They spent the last number of hours talking about each one of these eight visionaries. These are the business leaders of the future. They're the businesses of the future. And it's incredibly difficult for them to decide who's the emerging entrepreneur of the year for 2010. We're not allowed to leave this room until we've selected a winner. Have you selected yours yet? Find out who the judges selected during our award show on RTE1 on Thursday the 21st of October. For more information, check out rte.ie slash tv. Next week, I'm on the road again to meet the nominees in the international category.